Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a mixing valve to take apart. Essentially, I had redone my bathroom, uh, completely gutted it, and renovated the entire thing. Wanted to go take a shower and found out that the hot water wasn't getting as hot as I would like. So I learned that there's these little two check valves, one for the cold side, one for the hot side, that essentially collects grime and dirt and you know prevents it from you know traveling through further into the shower head or the handheld etc so i'm going to take you with me on taking it apart never done it before but uh figured this is good as any uh it's a specialty shower rain shower head uh mixing valve and diverter uh i got it off amazon for about 220 dollars it's sr sunrise and uh let's see what happens Okay, so we're in the shower now. We're ready to take the front faceplate off, the diverter switch, and the mixing valve switch. Um, there's uh, a Allen key in each switch to actually pull the covers off. I had already done that, but it is a size two and a half millimeters for both top and bottom. So I have removed the key, the, the Allen screw, so it'll just come off. And then we don't want to scratch the faceplate, so we'll just pull this off for good measure. And it just wiggles off because it's got a rubber grommet on its backside. Okay, so that's off. And it's got a metal cap here on the front, so we just need to unscrew this. And then it has on this brass threaded portion, it's got two flat sides, so we can put a adjustable wrench on it. So I've got one here. And let's see how hard or easy this is, but it should just come off, twist off, so. There's gonna be a little bit of water. Make sure that you do turn off the water at one of your ball valves. And then this just pulls out. All right. And here's our here's our valve. I'm gonna bring it in closer so that you can see what I'm talking about. So there's the inside of the mixing valve. And it's hard to see, but there's two little check valves, one there and one there. And I'm gonna pull those out with neo nose pliers. So let's do that. Here's a better shot of that mixing valve and you can see the check valves hot side and the cold side. And so let's grab the hot side and pull it out. Of course it looks like Here's the cover. I mean the spring. There appeared to 
be actually some wood, a wood chip. So here are the two pie three pieces for the check valve. So we'll take out the cold side. Tiny little spring. I can barely feel it. Try not to smash it in. So here are the pieces again. So it appears the cold side was fine, but there was definitely a wood, a little wood splinter in the hot side. Would that have made a difference? I guess it's anything's possible at this point. Okay, so we're going to put the cold side check valve back in. So this is what it looks like together. Let's see, come on camera zoom. There we go. If I let go of this stem, the spring will extend and the rubber grommet will raise up. Just like that. A little bit of grime right there. So before we put this one back in, we need to wash this one. Okay. I have the hot side all cleaned up. We're gonna put this one back in there. That looks like that's it. Then we can take our, our valve, our mixing valve. I wanted to show how water gets distributed by a max flow or a minimum flow. So this blue piece right here actually determines how far you can raise and lower the handle. If you leave it here, it's on a max flow because it can go the farthest because of this piece this blue piece that actually has some ridges on it. You, you can vaguely see it. So if you, it goes up all the way. But if you move this piece, which you can easily do by just pulling up or, and lose it at the same time, if you put it forward and you lock it in, now it can only go a short distance. So by moving this forwards or backwards determines how far you can have the water flow at a high rate or a low rate. So we want it on the max, so we'll pull it back. Go we'll back a little bit more. All right, push it in, and now you can see it goes much further. So this blue piece determines max flow or minimum flow. Now if you turn it this way, you would think you could, you, this has little grippies on it and you would just turn it, but actually you pull it up. There we go. I don't know what these are called, but there's little slits that go around. They don't go around all the way. They're on, they're on both sides for hot and cold. But if I can get the camera to focus, you can see there's actually a blue tick right there. And that determines the hottest temperature, or that's the tick that determines by this ring to determine a colder temperature or a hotter temperature. So there is a plus sign 
right there, and there is a minus sign right there. This one's hard to see because there's a, there's a gash. You can see now, minus sign, and this one has a plus. There you go, plus. So, by determining where you put the plus or the minus determines how far, how hot or how cold the temperature will be. So it actually was on the hottest setting. So if we line up the grooves, I think it might have been one slit off. Whereas, I think it was, now I say I think it was here. You can see, there you go, you can see this, you can actually see the change. There's the tick and then there's the slit, but we need to actually go one more. And now it's closer. So this is max flow of water and the hottest temperature. I hope that clears up the water cartridge and how it works and how you actually adjust the, the max flow of water or the temperature of the water. All right, so we have our cartridge. We need to line up the two pins that are here and here with the two holes that are there and there. And that's how you know it's properly seated. Okay, so. There. Okay, now you can feel the actual rubber grommet seat. So, we can't turn it now. That's what we wanted. So now, we will take our brass knuckle and thread this back on. Just hand tight, snug. Don't need to go crazy torquing down on it. Just, you know, if you're unsure, bring it back and then snug fit. And then we can tape our cover for the grass nut. A simple trick to make sure that you're lining up correctly with the threads and you don't cross thread them. Just sit here, I'm not sure where you go. If you go left a little bit, eventually the threads will seat and then that's when you know that you can go. You'll feel it go and actually turn right and tighten them up. All right, so hand tight there. Face play back on. Uh, we can throw our oh, there, our handle on, and our diverter switch on. That's that. All right, I got the diverter switch and mixing valve switch back on. We're gonna turn the hot water, cold water back on. This mixing valve requires both be on, otherwise it doesn't pressurize correctly and it won't run. No water will run through it. So 
Uh, before we screw down the Allen key screws on each handle, let's go turn on the water, let it pressurize. Let's see if we have any leaks and do we reach that hot temperature that we were seeking. All right, in the basement, turning on the cold water first. Followed by the hot water. We're pressurized, we're on. It appears there are no leaks. We just throw the cap on. Mixing valve on. I had taken the faceplate off because I obviously would have not known. Well, I would, it, I would have known that it leaked had the faceplate remained on, but just took it off to, for ease of use. So we will, I believe it's on the, the handheld. Not on the handheld, it's on the rain shaft. Go to hot. Does it get hot? It's lukewarm now. Still lukewarm. I still don't think it's as hot as the sink gets. So that doesn't give me ones and fuzzies. Now we're on the handheld. Dude, the handheld's actually pretty hot. Why would that make a difference? Obviously it's different piping but. all right that about wraps up this one the temperature is now at a hotter setting for the hot side cold side we didn't change uh, we cleaned out the left check valve which was the hot side it actually had a little teeny wood splinter in it um, and then the check valve had some grime that we washed and cleaned as well uh, I did the, the rain shower head off camera. There wasn't much to see, just the filter that actually had some white grime as well, and I used canned air to clean that out. Tight, buttoned it all back up. Uh, turned the water back on, and max flow rate might be better, but we weren't really looking to improve on that, and the hot water is awesome. So that about wraps up this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please comment down below, subscribe, and give it a thumbs up.